Good morning, team. It's me, Jay Song. Welcome back to our YouTube chart room. I'm so glad you're joining us today. Today, we're going to be having a video where I'm going to be discussing some thoughts about XRP. I'm going to be sharing a, a very important dream in the, in the second part of today's video um, and that people sent me. So please, uh, stay tuned for that second half. Uh, we're first going to be going over some price maps. Um, first, I want to go over XRP. And yesterday, um, all this week, I've been telling everybody how excited I am about this setup. When we, when we came here and we came down and started curving up like that, that's what I wanted. If you remember from my earlier videos, I actually was telling everyone um, that I will settle for this. But if you try to go up, you can come straight back down. It can be very short-lived. But when you have these nice curves and you come down and you kiss your support lines or you hard close against your support lines, this this the bigger the space in between that that, that area of the curve gets the attentions of the institutional buyers and it really sets sets it up. So we woke up this morning to higher prices as expected. Um, please go ahead and watch my previous analysis if you want to learn and understand how price action works. Uh, so we are going to uh, have some stalling action here at this line right here. Um, we had these lines on our charts and we, as we are already seeing this morning, um, this is 79.01. And then there should be another resistance at 80.28. But when you have such a good setup, at a known support area, we should be able to push through these no problem. The better it sets itself up without, you know, without touching these lines, it just set it up, set itself up. The better it has a chance of pushing through, as we've seen um, in other other support and resistance areas, um, such as here. We had some these th at this time the phantom was actually working as a, as a resistance area, and we had three resistance areas. But because we were coming off of a nice bounce here. With this nice double bottom at weekly supports, we were able to push through that line no problem. And it didn't just go right right to the next one because price does have to rest if it's going to push much higher. And so what, what we found was that price did this. And I was telling everybody, I said, I want price to come up and come down. And now uh, I, I was telling everybody in the group chat, I'm very so proud of this this line because it's, it's happening exactly like I wanted to. Um, and uh, everybody's like, are you sure? Because we were, you know, when you're when you're looking at price and it just looks like that, and you're you're still touching the bottom lines, it's scary. I was like, no, guys, this is this is right. This is really right. We got this nice curve. The next step we need is that nice slowly curve up. And and you see this playing out over the last few days. We see that nice curve up, and I like this. This is really good because this is what you need if price is gonna blast through those lines. And I told you guys I had um, in my prayer time. I had uh, I had uh, made uh, these trend lines where I was marking some resistance lines and I had a vision where I believe the interpretation of that vision was that my plans would be pleasantly interrupted. Um, so what I'm expecting as resistance areas, I believe that just to be run right through those lines and, and more so over the coming days. Um, we may actually see it in the next few, few hours, maybe today. Um, we may actually see this. Now, this is not moon. This is not XRP activation. When that happens, you'll know it. Price should shoot up to thousands of dollars almost immediately and, I, and we're going to talk about that more but um in this current run i i am expecting very very high numbers for xrp i'm actually expecting prices to go somewhere around to 12 dollars um because of what we're receiving from the prophetic community and then a, another low back down to around um the previous highs or a 61.8 and this could be around uh, the two dollar level right here um it could also be around three dollars which are the previous is high here which is 330 so these are things that i'm i'm looking at and I'm going to be monitoring um, as we uh, as we continue through this. So if you haven't seen my videos yet, or if you're not part of the chart room, uh, you can go ahead and um, please join me there. You can find me here is uh, the link is in the description of this video. Um, you can also type this in. You can find it on Telegram for free, or you can join me on Patreon for any don a donation of any dollar amount. And you'll see my my daily post about XRP. You'll also see my last maps for any important cryptos that I uh, that people have been requesting or something sometimes their favorite. I recently did uh, gold and the price maps on gold for the daily charts and the weekly charts. So you can see and draw yourselves what lines are ahead, uh, what things we're looking for as far as resistances and what things we can be looking for supports. I'm not determining buy and sells based on price alone, but rather price behavior on how it moves through the map itself. Uh, and, and because of that, I'm able to find, uh, you know, how price should be behaving. And then it's, it's, a, it's a better way to read volume spread analysis. It's also a better way to, to look at your indicators because with price, you have battles within battles um, and waves within waves. And the bigger fish is usually almost always win. Um, so I want you to pay attention to that. 
and and not get and not miss out on your biggest opportunities or get caught up in, in thinking about something you really shouldn't be thinking about during on, on a lower time frame when you need to be paying attention to the big wave. Imagine a little surfer who's surfing and he's he's you know he's practicing on medium sized waves. If all he is is focused on those medium to small waves all day long and he takes his eyes off the horizon, then all of a sudden maybe a big big wave is coming in. He doesn't catch it because he wasn't looking for that. And that big wave comes, that wave is going to swallow up all the, the smaller waves and that can be very dangerous. And because he will, he may, so say you were like trading this small wave here, but if you don't keep your eye on the horizon, you may say, oh, whoa, I forgot there was a big wave coming in and supposed to be coming in at these levels. So I'm watching the bigger levels and I'm telling you this, that there was support here. Now, uh, we do have a lot of traders um, uh, in the chart room. Uh, God bless, God bless some of the traders there. Um, we got a real good guy. His name is uh, Jason. Um, and I know he's primarily working with uh, smaller time frames. And he's making, um, I hear he's doing very, very well. Um, so pay attention when he when he's uh, posting some of his charts. He, he's uh, he's blowing it out of the water. He's doing really good. Um, so as long as you guys are paying attention to the bigger waves in the overall story, you're going to be fine trading those lower time frames because you have a lot of time. So like, for example, if these are the barriers, you can trade up and down from here and here. If you're looking at a maybe a 15 minute chart, it could look, you know, it could look very lucrative possibly to you if that's what you're doing. Because this would look like it's, you know, a huge runway ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs, ups. And there's probably lots of opportunities uh, in, in between those areas if you know where to look. Um, so you, you, you have to, um, you have to try to read everything in context. Let's quickly go over four hour before we get into some of the other stuff, uh, here, um, that I wanted to share with you. What do I think right now is happening? Well, I think currently right now, um, on a lower time frame, which is right now a four hour for me, that's a little bit, um, it's new, normally high, but right now it's low. Uh, if we were looking at the, the volume spread analysis currently, here we have a very large volume spike on a green bar, okay? And if that was buying, the next bar should be a up bar. And they are, but it's on very low volume. However, so the next bar is naturally a down bar to test that, and also on low volume. So slowly, the so the next bar is an up green bar, and the volume is, is in that relatively same range, and then slowly we're increasing, and then finally we have an increase in volume followed by a massive green bar that tells us the buying was continued. So price actually has to test those levels and, and it is actually seen, is this really support? And yes, it really is support. So all of that is just telling a story at those ranges. Uh, and you can see that. Here's another one where you have a large green uh, red bar, but the next bar is has these very, very, very high uh, close. We close at the very tops um, on average volume. So if we have this big spike in volume on a down bar, how is the next bar not a down bar? It's actually an up bar with that went down but pushed all the way up. So that tells us that it's buying in this area. So that's buying. Uh, and then we have, if we went back to that other bar, we can see that this is healthy, okay? It needed to test this, but yes, it's healthy. It's a confirmation, okay? And so that's two good things. And then finally, we got this, this now this other bar right here, this large, large up bar which is on a four hour chart. So for the last four hours, we had massive volume on a green bar. The next bar should be an up bar. And yet it is actually, oops, hold on. It is actually a red bar, but you need to read it in context. We came all the way down to here and then went all the way back up. So that tells us this is like a continuation. This is still buying. Okay, because we went up and then we also experienced another deal do about a buy. So what do I think right now? I don't think this is the, the reverse. So I think that these lines are all just going to get in our way and stop price. As we saw for on this four hour chart, I uh, price came right up to that red line and, and went up and then came back down to it at the end. So pay attention to this. So the, to, to the lines that we're drawing here, because that's going to help give you uh, an edge or at least to understand where price should be caught up. And then if you read the volume spread analysis at these levels, it's going to give you a better context to say, hey, there's a lot of buying in here, so there's a stronger chance we're going to push that red line, and we may push through the gold line. Now, overall, on the daily chart, we see some of the similar things. Okay, let's look at the daily chart. Um, we have the large volume here on the red bar coming down, and the next bar on average volume up bar. So that tells us buying wasn't there. So on the larger time frames, we see buying at the area that we should be having buying in it. And that's perfect. We got the big, large arch buying, and then now we can continue up. And that's strong enough because of the setup, the big bounce to be able to push through as I've explained in my other videos. And I really want you to watch XRP part one. I mean, uh, the, the last XRP video I did, uh, the color is like a green teal color. 
um, they are the last ones. And then the next one is called part two, which is a continuation of that one where I'm telling you in the full story of XRP. So I think we're going to be strong over the next few days. Very strong. Okay. Okay. Quick look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is holding its own on top of its wicks. Um, it does have a funny curve to it, but it is holding. Uh, I was getting a lot of mixed signals from this and I'll show you why. So let's point, uh, point these out. I'm going to point them in, in yellow so you can see exactly what these lines are. So if we were connecting these wicks here and then taking that line and moving it up to the top or duplicating it, that is where um, price has found its support. <clears throat> There's also a continuing support on, a, on, a, on another time frame from here and where those lines intersected, uh, that's where price found its support. To be completely honest, I really believe Bitcoin is following the overall markets as a whole. In this case, where usually the markets follow Bitcoin, I actually believe that there has been a big decoupling that has happened for XRP, at least in this current time. Um, and I believe that a lot of the cryptos are, 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 are following the same type of pattern the more I look at them as a whole. Okay, let's go to a four-hour chart. We won't need this line anymore uh, as price passed through it. Good. Um, we do see that price had been caught. There was a sword cut based on this area here. Okay, and it was here. And so price came up to that point on the four hour chart and then came back down. But remember, what's the bigger fish? If you're only paying attention to the smaller time frames, you're only gonna be looking at this area here and you won't be paying attention to the full story. The full story in context is back on that daily chart where we, re where we see that price is sitting on top of the phantom. So it does look strong, but it can be caught up. And there are some things to just be aware of and why I just think there are definitely better options besides I don't really trade Bitcoin, but I do follow, um, I do follow what it does because usually a lot of markets come through. So I'm drawing, okay. So what I just did, what, what I was doing right now is I'm connecting these bottom of these reds and trying to make them accurate so we can see a picture. And I'm connecting the core of that. And okay, all right, there it goes. So we can see that price is acting strong against this line. You can see price tried to come up against it and then came up and finally pushed through and then sat on top of the line. And then the next bar was an up bar. And then now we're trying to find rest. So at this, at this area where price is now sitting on top of it a little bit, that's kind of bullish, that's very bullish. Uh, let's see what else on the four hour chart. This one we can get rid of now because price, it, it, it told its story, it paid it, but then immediately pushed, passed through and then on top of it. And you can see, uh, you can see that it's actually resting, oops, on that zone. Let's see the zone. It's too big. On average, it's about that big there. That's good. So when price came down and sat on top of this area, it says, okay, this did exist, but now it's it's lost. So now we can we can go over. So it's like a war that goes on at the pain points, and you can you can you can better uh, know what's going on. So on the past four hours, what this was yesterday, or on the fifth, about the fifth, there we're in that area now. So that's really good. Um, that's good for Bitcoin. It's following that. <coughs> All right, here's our Doge map from August second. Uh, we were looking for price to actually follow this path of the white line I was drawing. Um, we did see a lot of weaknesses, um, so it wasn't ready to just go down, as you can see, as you can see that this is not like a real good curve. You know, it's and it's funky. And when it's funky, it, it, it can it can lead up and have a lot of that because these all these spikes have re, have they have consequences to them. When price is smooth, like like how it's on XRP, then we can have a smooth transition to power or sustain higher prices. But when there's a lot of chop, um, even on a higher time frame, we got to be careful about this. So this was a four hour chart, but it's still, you know, it's really sharp as we're coming down. To, I mean, we came all the way down to that area. So that's, that's pretty sharp. Um, but overall, uh, if we could get down to here, I was telling everybody, if we can get down to there, we would do really good to be able to bounce up. I wouldn't want to go up from here without paying the price because you need that support. And I didn't trust this support as much because we were already doing that during that area, but it's still in play. And if price ever comes, then I'd want more. This one, I wouldn't want to just buy right at the core. I'd want to buy as we start to turn up into this area. As long as we turn up back into this area off a nice curve, if we get that curve, then we'd go up. And that was the analysis I had, I had explained uh, in our chart room and on our Patreon for these maps. Okay, so um, you can see from my white curve here, that's what I want. And so now again, fast forward to today, and we can see that we did, we did get that very nice curve. And again, that's what we need for higher prices. You need to have that. If you, if you just do that, then you can come back down just as quickly. But if you do it smoothly, you get the whole 
market institutions on board. You get the big money, you get the big players because everyone sees and the, the amount of space in between that curve will, will look like that. Now, so this is different than just like uh, if you were seeing a cup and handle pattern where you buy in at the handle uh, and then price can continue up. When you're using the sword methods, when you find where that is at, you're actually looking for behavior at those cuts and that's gonna give you a, a much better target. And that's why I really enjoy uh, this method that uh, I'm using. Um, and I have been using for several years. I, I just call it the sword method. Uh, I didn't have anyone teach me this. I didn't have people teach me uh, trend lines from books, but every time I read a book, um, they were talking about generalities rather than being exact. Because if you're exact, when you're, when you're drawing from core to core, wick to wick, and you're gonna tell the full and complete story. And so that's how uh, I like to trade within these ranges to know uh, different things um, and to trade in those zones and to put the map on price to tell the full story or as best a story you can find and discover. So. Let's look at some other things. Um, these purple lines are the Fib match. We're seeing price coming very close to those lines uh, and it coming up and then coming down and coming up. Uh, so now the next one is here and we're already rejecting off of that 24, 24 cent, 37 cent line. Um, and then we should be able to uh, continue. The, the better the curve, like this looks good, we should be able to go higher. So on this four hour chart, it's been performing nicely, um, but I'm not in Dodge right now. Um, I stopped trusting Dodge when we were back up here in this area and I told everybody what I wanted to see. If we saw that, then we can go, but uh, I'm already so happy with XRP's uh, price and I'm very happy with XRP's curve that I'm just not paying attention to Dodge right now. I'm really I'm really in, uh, thinking XRP. If you are into Dodge, um, this is the this zone up here. Remember that's gonna be the, the major battler that you're gonna see because that has the, that has the encompassing of a very, very uh, big resistance, okay? The resistance from this one is part of a parabolic of these guys here. And so that's a very big range, okay? Uh, yes, this is a strong battler. And if you look at proportionally, this one is this long and this one is this long. So this one may be the winner, but the longer price takes to push up, the weaker this guy gets, okay? So you want to be aware that this guy has to cover a lot of ground. Look at all the no man space before we get to the 38, uh, 30 cents and 86, uh, 30 cents, basically. It's a lot of ground we have to cover. So by the time it gets up there, then it has to build. So imagine, imagine a marathon and somebody has to run a marathon um, a long way. And then after that, you know, they're so tired, they're like, whew, we finally got here. And then they have to battle the boss character at the very end without restocking up on supplies, without getting rest, um, you know, without getting a good night's sleep. It is that type of thing you're going to be talking about when we reach these levels of 30 cents, uh, 0.86. So I want you guys to be aware that it is very likely we're going to see, according to this, a uh, rejection at those levels. Now, here's something further. The pastor from Fireside Grace Ministries on, uh, and I'll, I'll try to put a, a copy of his, his latest video in the morning. He actually talked this morning, reminding people again about, about Dodge and how he saw it would go like 19 cents and then uh, 30 cents. Uh, and then, and then it, I guess that already happened. And then there was another time he said, it's going to go to 30 cents again. And then we'll go back down to like 19 cents. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually hit back down to 19 cents. Now, 19 cents is this area here. Oh, look at that. Yeah. 19 cents actually is the sword cut. See, look at that. 19 cents. Okay. Look at 19. So that is a very, uh, a very possibility. What we can do is we can actually extend that out just, just to uh, keep that on the map. Um, and then he said, I expect it to go to, he said 90 cents. This is what he said. He's saying, what? 90 cents. It's very possible. So, so if we were to hit 90 cents, that's a very high level. And that's a very big profit <clears throat> for those who are in Doge and I'll pay attention to him. Now I don't have any data for that right now at the moment but we can very well hit there. Look how high we hit in the price. We hit 73 cents, okay? So if price can close above that 71 cent line, it's very possible we can get up there. So perhaps that data will reveal itself in the future. As of right now, I don't have that. Um, so I'm not gonna be uh, worrying about that. I'm just gonna assume that that's what's gonna happen. This, this uh, profit is very accurate. I will say this, um, though I have not met that pastor personally, um, and I don't know him, I am friends with someone who does know him personally and uh, does communicate with him uh, on uh, a, a very close level, a uh, very close level. So um, I, trust, I trust those people who are reaching out to me, uh, giving me this information, and he also uh, mentioned that today in his video. So we'll see what's going on with that. Um, I can say right now that this data absolutely supports this happening for Dodge, um, the uh, Dogecoin. I always say, right, Dodge, get out of Dodge. Uh, so we'll be, I'll be expecting that. 30, 30 cents, especially if XRP is moving up, you're gonna see a lot of cryptos going up, but they'll move up proportionally. So uh, can we hit that level and beat it? Oh, probably. 
probably. But um, I think we're going to come back down and hard close. I think it's going to have a hard time surpassing that. If it does boom higher this time, it would need to do that and then go up. Okay? Like that curve. Okay? I'm telling you. That's that that's that shape that you need when you push through a major resistance It's good to have a pullback and then you have to have the curve up and same thing that, that I told you we were expecting for XRP and we finally got it. So that's doge. Let's look at XLM Okay from XLM we have our map from August 3rd. I wrote XLM has also arched over nicely on top of support It's phantom area as we have explained and I put meant to put in my other videos, there are these are the curves I desire the most. They allow prices to stay higher and build up higher, much more longer than normal runs straight up, which can be short lived. But when the prices arch and uh, arches and bounces off that support, it's a perfect bounce, and it lets the whole world know that support has happened. If you're new to trading, this is only something that's seen in hindsight. I meant to put, but for seasoned for the seasoned or seasoned investors, it's something to be expected. Imagine the jump off a diving board. To make a big splash, you have to jump high and then land on that supporting board. If you don't arch, you'll come and come down, you'll be able to go higher easily. If you don't arch and come down, you won't you won't be able to go higher easily. But if you can, if you do, and you can bounce very high off the support point. If it holds, if it holds. So it's like a springboard, we're going up and down. And if we can get that to happen, then we can go up easily. Um, and the better and smoother the curve, you're gonna look better. So this is a phantom area, it's the same as this blue line. It is that, it's just a different color. In this in this case, um, so that's what we're looking up, uh, looking forward to. We wanted to come down first to those areas, and then we can go up as denoted by this uh, white arrow. And these are the this is the map I put for August third, XLM. Let's look at today. Okay, as of August seventh today. Um, oh, and I forgot in the beginning, first video of XRP. It, I didn't change the date. It should say uh, August seventh. Um, but we did see that uh, we have found support and have bounced off of that area. Now I would like a little bit lower support because it's just here. Um, and then the phantom was here um, and we kind of just did that a little bit and this one we didn't come all the way through So it seems a little premature for me uh, for my taste But it's still a nice curve a little bit. Okay, you can see that um, There let's look at a four-hour chart. Maybe it looks uh, looks a little bit better here um, Still a little bit funny to me um, But something good, you know, it's something it's still something so I, I, we, I would be looking for higher prices. It, it's probably just launching uh, too quickly, in my opinion. Um, but it's still launching where it should. It should have launched at a phantom uh, support area, and we are in that area. We're actually in the cut of that area. So we're looking at these phantoms and where those lines cut through price. That's where you draw. That's the most important. That's where you draw straight out. And in this example, the phantom cut here, so we draw this line straight out, which is this blue line here that I drew in that area, okay? When price went up and then found support at that area, then we're able to go up higher. So be looking for that. And that one's looking very good so far. And that is XLM. Oh, where are we going? Um, I think the next target right here is up here at 36 cents, 36.47 cents for XLM uh, per my previous videos. Again, if you're just tuning in, uh, you're just clicking through this video, please, you can join me on Patreon. You can see uh, my list of charts that I put up and any updates that I have for our previous charts. Um, and also you can join me on Telegram uh, for free for following XRP uh, and some of the other main ones. Uh, you can do that and I'll be uh, giving my uh, complete analysis uh, char uh, charts. I usually post a couple charts a day, um, mostly in the morning. And then in the evening, I'll usually give uh, like a quick update um, for, for things I'm doing. But these major curves, I want you to be aware that these major curves take some time. So I haven't changed any calls um, of, of XRP until I see a change of behavior in price. I've been in XRP about right here on the XRP chart. It almost looks identical to this one. Um, so I, I haven't changed my position. Uh, just bear in mind, nothing in this video is financial advice at all. Nothing in this advice, uh, in this video should be considered trading advice. Everything you see and hear is for comedic and entertainment purposes only. Bear in mind, I eat red crayons for breakfast and often get a tummy ache. And if you do the same, you're probably going to get a tummy ache too. Uh, so please bear in mind and read between the lines per my uh, little YouTube disclosure and uh, my Telegram disclosure. It's never financial advice. Trading does involve substantial risk and you do so. Uh, at your uh, at your own risk. I can only I can only provide the maps to you. I can't predict the future. Uh, but you can I can give you a bigger better edge than you had before, knowing the maps in advance because then you can see why price is behaving the way it does. Price is not as random as you think. It actually makes a lot of sense if you know where to look or you know how to read uh, how to read uh, a chart. Uh, the practice of doing this is called technical analysis. Okay, and uh, for people who read and can understand uh, price action through the charts, it's called they're called technical analysts. Um, so this is what I do. I've been doing this for 19 years, uh, watching price action in the forex and in stocks and um, 
this is it's a big difference between just buying and holding um you know being an investor this is this is like day trading um but this would be called more more considered like swing trading because we're not always in a trade we're not all, uh in every stock you know when it's not how it works we, we have to wait for certain setups but there are times when you can find those setups in advance and the best support points and, and make a good decision and then there are other days when we just have straight up setups and that's what we see so uh, i hope you join me on my patreon uh, it does require a donation of any dollar amount uh you can do a dollar or thousand dollars if you want or join me on telegram for free i would love to see you in our chart room there on telegram part of the community making some friends and asking people about our charts we have a lot of knowledgeable people in the in the group and a lot of fun people and a lot of fun conversations so you gonna have a good time uh it's a very uh, good place to be um yeah all right xdc xdc has some of the most potential um and the setup is setting up in a very different way but it's setting up nonetheless good so this was a previous chart that i've done from uh tuesday august 3rd um, where we have this big long white line which is a parabolic support so i'm actually expecting price to actually pump <clears throat> to a support area either the gold line i want it to come down uh, which is going to be the sword cut. Um, the first time we hit that cut, we actually went up to uh, 0 0.095 cents, okay, right up there. And then we came back down. But we're still coming up to a parabolic, and I want to hit that gold line, and then we want to ride this line all the way up. So if we can do that, that would be good. That was my thoughts um, on, uh, and I, well, this is why I drew this line here on August 3rd. Okay, that's why I drew that. Let's look at today. All right, for today, it's still tempted to go up but not able to because I think it's still waiting for a good setup. Now, the next balanced parabolic is, is around here and that's around August 13th. So I really don't think this is still gonna blow up to 13th. However, it has a very high potential of 18.73 cents for me. That's what I see in my charts. And, and uh, you're gonna see that right now, price is at 70.07 uh, cents. So I really like that potential um, and I also like that this parabolic here, had, it, it, they usually act as good support once they start on them. Um, and I really think we're going to get that type of support. Uh, I think it's, I, I really think it's coming. Um, but will we get down to here to 69 cents again? It's possible. We may get it. We may not. Um, the last support areas where were right here on top of this big run because we had price come up all the way here and then come down. And so the core area is this blue line here, which we have drawn. Uh, and currently that blue line is at 75.29 cents if you were drawing that. Uh, so you can do that. It price did already hit it. It's I want I wanted lower prices again. I wanted price to hit that lower band right here, but we may not get it. It's very possible we can come down and then come up and get it. I would like that. If not, that doesn't happen. Price will come up and finally hit the wall and come up. If it's weak and it phases through right here, then most likely I am going to be out. Even if price were to come up here into this area again at nine cents, I'd probably be out. Now I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's. I think this is going to use momentum from all the other cryptos going up, especially like XRP, and then it would find its bounces. But I like these parabolics because they provide a dynamic moving support, which means price can do this and bounce on it many times and go up. And that's what we see uh, in price action. From once once we get up here, then we're going to see, uh, most likely I'll read it and then it's going to say exit. Um, but we may get up there and then we can go up. But we need to see what happens at that point. Okay, for now, that seems to be a very reasonable uh, target uh, for these. So we'll, we'll watch XDC. I am still very long XDC. I believe it looks very good and healthy. And I love these prices here. Everything's still looking good. We, we do have some kind of curve here. Uh, we do have another sword cut right there if you were to look. So maybe that is something here. Um, maybe that is something we, we should be looking at um yeah yeah i guess in this range here from if i were to draw in that cut here and then the wicks that gives us a range of about this long and so we are still in the buy area so this if price is going to move up this is the time to do it if it fails and it phases through uh maybe i'll just i'm not I, I won't, i'll just choose a different option uh, but for right now i'm still very very long because this is looking very healthy and i'm in the low prices buy low and sell high in the correct zones and if you know where those zones are at you're going to greatly increase your odds zeal zeal from july 31st 2021 this was the map that i saw with the major price points to watch for um 0.87 uh, 0 0.0877 0 0.0931 uh later on i turned one of those into a wick or i draw i drew a wick on there um but there was a couple of things that we were looking for we did have this we did have this we had the support of this run here with the sword cut. These lines, even though they're so close to each other, they were really important because they pushed price all the way through. So what we did uh, was we had
So what we did was we connect those two tops, we draw them out, and though they are not a phantom support, they were a support. Um, it's where this, you know, this area right here is. So what we saw was price, uh, it was enough to push price down for quite a bit until finally we jumped and break through that line. And then when we do, price came and sat back down on it very briefly, um, which is kind of weak so that price could come back down. That means that when it, when it goes up so quickly and comes back down, it's, it may not be as strong as we think and price would need another support. So that lends that we may find support at the phantom area, which is connecting these wicks here. And I'll show you that this wick, which is here all the way down here to there. So we actually connect those two lines and then duplicate them into the future. And there we go. And that's the phantom line. So you see that here shown as a dotted line. Okay. So there's a couple things that price can do. It can either take the cores of here and then it can bounce up in here in this area or on that line as well, or just hang out and crash, crash through here. But whatever the case is, it's all support. And we might be looking for higher prices unless price is really, really weak at this area here. If price does that, then we can go down. And so this is how price behavior works. Um, but let's see what happens. And, and as price unfolds, you're more likely to tell the actual case of what happened. So that was July 31st. That was our last map of Zill. And now we're going to explain what happened at the end. Okay. Now on the, on August 7th, which is this morning, we can see a few things happening. So price did break through that phantom line. So if it breaks through, I'm looking for it to act like a floor now. And what do we see? We see that price went through it and came down and curved right on that line. You see that? Let's zoom in a little bit more. See, this is very accurate. See this phantom line is very accurate. You need to draw these lines and you need to make sure you're having those lines as part of your toolkit because it's gonna be telling you where to look for certain behaviors of price. So we see that price touched this line exactly and curved nice. Look at that nice smile. Look at that. That's what I like, guys. That's what I like. Okay, that's what's going to make me happy. And now that we did that, we actually have momentum to push through these. Now, if it didn't do it awkwardly and it just kind of bounced like that, then we might be expecting resistances at this level and that level. And then, you know, and maybe, you know, just a little bit here and there. But as it is, I'm only looking for now minor resistances. We can see that what happened was price did come up to that 0.80 line here. And came and touched it and came right back down. Somebody in the chart room said, hey, your target hit. So, well, that's good. That's really good. But we still need that nice curve. Now, this is happening on a four-hour chart. So if you're one of the Zill followers or you're trading Zill, you knew what things to be looking for. Um, and, I'm, and if you don't know, uh, you know, I'm telling you those kinds of things are the things you should be looking for. When you see a major resistance area, I want to add this. Okay. And just say you see something like this and price starts curving nicely against it and a known resistance area. You want to examine that. What is happening? Why is price doing that? You want to pay attention to that because that could be very, very important. Is this a behavior that should happen here? Um, that's what those are the kinds of things you want to be watching for. Now, me, because of this setup, it looks pretty good. I think we should be able to at least get to that high and then maybe we can curve up here and then we can re-examine it. But we also need to see how strong those previous resistances are. So that is on a hike in ashy candle. You can use regular candles and it's going to look like that on a four hour. But again, I paid most of my attention in the daily charts. Now on the daily charts, this is not as strong and I will tell you why. On the daily chart, I don't think this is as strong because all we're doing is just sitting on here. This is not like a nice curve, not like XRP, okay? It's just kind of there. It's on the four hour chart, so it should act like in, a, in the short term go up. But if it's gonna go up in the longer, longer term, I think it's just, it's gonna be because the market as a whole is moving and, but it will move proportional to itself. The other thing is that I, I expect it to have some major resistances because the battles it's going through you got a lot of hardcore points here, okay? This one right here was from this long movement down. So you gotta look at that in context. Long movement, and then we went up. And so we came down here, but then we pushed up through it. So it's fighting against that, so it's winning. So this means that this has some strength to it. And this is based on this. The next one is a smaller one, but enough to keep price down and push through. So look at, look at that one, it's this red line here. And look exactly where, where, where price is at at the moment. On this daily chart, we try to get up into that area and we're already being pushed down by this, this dotted line. What, well, what's that dotted line? That was the wick of this bounce here. Okay, you go to the very wick and that was the point. So we have this wick and if it's reacting to the wicks, that means we should be paying attention to those wicks as well. So this, this is another line we might wanna draw. Uh, here, you, well, I'll just do it simple like this. Take this line, clone it, move it towards the wick of here. Because according to Wikipedia, 
that's when we should be expecting probably another uh, push down. Now, is it enough to stop price? I don't think so. We want to see a change in behavior, but if you're scalping, you, you may say, oh, those, le those, le those levels may work as a resistance. But it's maybe a little bit difficult to scalp them because price would have, you, you would have saw price pushing way high above and then coming uh, back down to the levels. How do you know if it's going to directly go to those levels back? We don't. You have to use an examination on those smaller time frames. But if price does hard close against it, then we may go to like, you know, 90 cents or something lower. It just depends. You need to pay attention to them. But I will can I can tell you this. There's some battlers here and they're going to be fighting against price. And it's possible it can push, push price down before needing to go back up or continue going down. But we can be safe at these zones. And that's why if you were buying Zill, maybe you should have already been buying at the lows rather than trying to chase it through the battle. Because this could take a little bit and you can get shaken out before continuing its up move if it's going to do that. Okay? So that is Zill. Algorand. Let's look at Algorand, August 6th. This was from yesterday. Somebody asked me to look at Algorand. This is what I see. I see some high potential currently at $4.72. So we do have potential to get up there, but we need price to have boosted in this area because we're coming up to the support area. And if we don't break, if we just phase through and the price goes right through that line, like like that, we're done. That's it. There's, it's, you're gonna be, there's, there's, there's a your price could fall and it could fall to these green lines. Um, and then, but right now at that moment, I, it'd be dangerous. So for me, that would look something like the price faded through here. Um, I would want it actually to, to at least come back down to here. And then we might go up here. And that's when I'd probably exit because now we're on the underside of that line. And that's usually a sign for lower prices. But as it is, if this is a daily chart, so each one of these can take a little bit of time. It's a day. Um, if price pushes through, I want to see it get back into this area. If it does, then we have, you know, a lot of evidence that we can hit this, this like something like that. That is a very real possibility with Algorand, but we need to see it. Um, as it is, price is, is still coming into this lit area and we're, we're running out of supply. So that could be a, a sign that, that we're not interested in these lower prices and price does, is going to be interested in these higher prices up here. So price can be very attracted to this area again. And so that's a very real possibility there um, that we can definitely make it up to eight, uh, $4.82 as the, as the next highs at the moment. Um, we do need to see how price will be behaving. I do think that Algorand is going to go up along with the rest of the markets. Um, there is something here as well, you know, because of these, um, these big resistance area here, I think price can really bounce. And we've seen that price came down, stop, price came down, stop, price came down, stop. So I really think we are going to be going up. A lot of the evidence supports that at the moment. Oh, and I, I did need to remember, uh, this is a weekly chart. This is a weekly chart. So every one of these, and, and you can see that where it says 1W, that means weekly chart, one week. Each one of these candles is one week worth of time. Uh, as of the filming of August 2nd, it was two days. So today, uh, at the end of today, this is going to be the, the last candle and it should be closing. Um, we need to close up. If it closes down, it's not good. So I put Algo is dangerously close to losing support of the Phantom unless it goes up this week. So far, it has. But then next week, we also need to go up if it wants to use the momentum from this wave to stay higher. Currently, it has support from the flat core line, which is the green line, and the, uh, and the flat wick. Only the wick has been penetrated, and so this is still very healthy. Since this is where the phantom support and flat support meet, I expect a bounce in this area. Perhaps it is just waiting for the market as a whole to begin as the catalyst. If it does, I could see much higher algo prices. Currently, I can see a quick projection up to $4.72. I'm not saying it can't go higher, um, but right now, that is where the projection is at. If you were to connect uh, connect these lines right now based on current price, currently price can hit about $3.50. But if we're proceeding naturally, we should be able to hit at least that range $4.72 naturally. It could even be around five fifty. dollars um, That is just what I see right now. Um, the other thing the other thing that I did for a projection is I actually took this line right here, this measurement from the uh, wick to the wick, and then I, I duplicated it at the support area here to find the work. So this line is exactly the same measurement of this line, and that's marked in purple up here, okay? So that's that's that. So that's how I got four dollars and seventy two cents. This is a basic projection to be safe. Yeah, price can move up because a lot of times it's proportional. But that is uh, being conservative for me. Let's look at Algorand on a daily chart. All right, Algorand on the daily chart. Algo on the daily chart is looking healthy and set up for an up move as it is bouncing off its recent sword cut at point seventy nine eighty eight. I expect this to, this to be strong enough to push through its upper phantom, uh, currently acting as a resistance. If it goes, it should rest on top meaning on top of it. If it does this, it will be strong enough to continue upward for higher prices. Also, the lower we have gone, we can see the volume is drying up. This means that the big money is not interested in lower prices and the supply at these prices is going away. Uh, this means 
this means higher prices are very likely in the near future. This is a daily chart, so please use patience. This could take many days, but it is also set up for a very, it's looking really good. So let's look quickly. You see that these tops here, here, make that bigger. Yeah, that's good, that's good. So let's look, we have this support, this support, this support. We connect those lines because they're all in sync. And then I'm gonna duplicate that line and that's how we get the phantom here. Okay, so that line exists, it is there and it is waiting. If price were to ever go to that line, uh, we need to get up there. Now, can we get up there? Well, if we were to take the move from here and the move from here and we connect those down, where price cut is the sword cut and that is in this orange area here. So um, I, made, I marked it in orange, okay? So we see that price actually came down nicely into this area and curved. Good. This is, again, guys, these are the type of curves that I like. Okay, this is what I need. All right, so this is why I love them so much because they, they when you see them on a sword cut, that's a very good signal that price is going to be moving higher. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to counter resistance or other battles, battlers, but the amount of effort that was put into the, into the sword cut is going to determine if we can press through or not. Well, this looks very healthy for me. We got lower, lower the volume's drying up, so nobody's wanting lower prices. So that tells us that there needs to be a big push for upper prices. But before that can happen, there has to be a setup. When you see the setup happen before your eyes, that tells us, whoa, we're ready. We're ready to go. And so now what we do expect on this daily chart is that we got the bounce exactly where we need it to. Exactly. I think price is going to bounce through and I think it's going to come up, sit on that line and then go up here. Now it could just be a funky and then uh, we'll take it. But what I want now is another nice curve right here on this line. I want a nice curve. The better the, the better the curve, the better. Then we can go up to much higher prices. And this is what I see on Algorand on August 6th. Let's look at today. Okay, so far on August 7th, as of today, we're, we're looking even better. We are looking even better. We're even closer than we were yesterday with another long a green candle and there's still eight more hours left in today's session the crypto it does uh, with crypto markets it's not midnight united states time bear in mind um it, there's eight hours as of right now it, it just actually the time is a little bit different but this is still the pattern i'm looking for i'm looking for a breakthrough um we can resist off of that level but and if we see that then i might be looking oh, okay well maybe this is going to be a fail we might have to come back down again or price could flag through that. But as it is, I've been watching this type of move for a long time. This is exactly what I expect, okay? So this yellow line is, is, is what I expect right now. That is Algorand, Matic. Let's look at Matic on one daily, on, on a daily chart. Each candle is one day. On Matic, somebody asked me to look at Matic. I don't know what Matic is, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> um, we did have a sword cut here at 0.90, uh, 16. So 0 0.9016 is where we have a sword cut. However, there is a major phantom sword cut from $1.40 to 1.73 cents. Okay. That is connecting the tops of here and we put uh, this one's up here and then putting them on the phantom in that area. Okay. That gives us this, the wick, which is the dotted line and the solid line up here, which is the core. We take the range from that and that gives us the sword cut area. This area should act like a resistance area when price gets into there. However, we don't, we, I don't think we're going straight up to there, but we may. And if we do that, I think it's only moving up based on the merits of the market as a whole. If the market goes up, this will go up. So that's why I think that Matic is more like a beta. It's just a follower. Um, it's not like an alpha currency or anything that really holds its own. If it did, and if the markets were down, then I'd expect it to look something like this, to come and sit on its own so cut. So that way it has its own leg to stand up. As it is, it's almost like it's just being magnetically attracted to this area because the market's moving up. And that tells me that Matic might not be that strong as you think. There might be better options for a currency. I would want Matic to come down here and stand on its own legs because then, you know, it, we can actually get up into this area and sustain. Otherwise, this is gonna just fall on a bad day or because of general manipulation. It, it, if you're gonna stand up as a crypto against manipulation, you need to have, you need to be strong enough on your own. There is no reason why price should just go straight up from here to here, unless, you know, I really, really miss something. But currently, I mean, we got supports way down here. Okay, I mean, look at this. Where is the, where is the, where is the real support? Maybe I missed something, but I mean, that's not it. Why did we go up here? I, I have to look more, but even even with a strong you know thing, I don't think we would just go straight up to its next cut when we're so close to the you know to this area to its its own sword cut. 
price almost usually hits it. And, and you can say, well, we did hit it that day. Yes, we did. We went up here like for like a half a second and then came back down. Uh, that is like nothing. That doesn't even really count to me. We actually have to, it has to look natural. It has to look organic. It can't just look like that. Okay. And so that's why I don't really, I'm not really excited about it. Um, I would be excited about it again if we if we come down into this area and curve. Ooh, that would be good. I'd be like, ooh, yeah, look at, let's look at attractive. This is an attractive price. So um, at the moment, it's just, I, I just don't see it, guys. So yeah, so that's my Matic. Uh, let's look at today. So Matic today, the same thing that's happening. Uh, Matic is going up in this direction without paying the price. So that tells me that most likely if we go up here without paying the price, it's just because price wants to be fulfilled. If we get up here, there's a stronger chance now that we won't push through it. There's a stronger chance we'll come down because price didn't stand on its own two feet. It's like the little boy who thinks he's something because he has an older brother, but his older brother isn't always there when he has to do the, you know, his, his own battling. And so he's moving up and marching up like he's brave. But without standing on something, you know, without the training that goes behind learning how to fight, you're going to get your butt kicked. And I, 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 it's a higher chance that his butt is going to get kicked because look who he's going up against. Guys, he's going up against this. And so you have this little go, but we had months. I mean, this was back in March 19th all the way till, till um, June 23rd, March, April, May, June. Four months worth. And then we went up in barely July 23rd. And this guy's looking like he's brave. Yeah, we're going to win. These, these all buyers need to take a profit. Because they, they, these, these buyers lost money um, and the sellers, they, they also want to complete their transactions. So you have a lot of switching of money that needs to happen. And they have been in the negative for quite some time. So they want to, they want to take out profits or they want to make break even. And they're going to be doing it at that level. So price needs to have, if it's going to go through this level to higher levels, it needs something to stand on. Now, if, if it's strong enough to push through, I still want to see, then I really would want to see a bounce in that sword area somewhere in this zone. I want to see some support. Either we need to go really high and then come back down into there and then curve up and then we can be we can be on board around here um i'm sorry around here you know it just depends on how it happens we need to be able to come up and then we can get back in at that level but as it is i don't think it's actually standing on its own two legs i think it's just going to be short-lived for matic at least for right now etn let's look at etn so for etn price did not pay the toll it has not done what it should have done it's like this and price should have came down to this area it should have curved up on top of that, but it did not. It went up like it was going to do it. And it's, so it looks like right now what it is, it's just a follower, something like Matic at the moment. I'm not saying it won't do well. Um, there are people who said some prophetic things about it. They were saying, yeah, we heard it was going to go up and it could, but I don't think that one, this one may go up until after the, 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 the crash. I also think it will spike up during the, the boom, but not on its own. Okay. Cause there's not really a reason for it to go up at this area. At least that I can tell. Um, I mean, yeah, there's there's not really much reasons at the moment that price should be experienced this that, that I can see. Uh, let me see if I can tell anything else I might have missed. We're always got to ask yourself, what may I what may I have missed? That's how you actually get good at predicting price. You keep asking yourself, what did I miss? Yeah, if we were just calculating where price was breaking through. Yeah, we saw the first one. We knew that and then we knew price would come back down. But what is the next leg to stand on? I just don't see it. I think this is going to be a short-lived, um, at least, and it's, in, it's not saying it can't go up, but I just think it's a follower. It's not worth, for me, it's nothing I can track or predict. It's just moving. I think it's moving with the markets as a whole. Um, nothing I can predict, at least not in my system. Maybe you have it in your system, uh, but I don't have it in mine. Uh, but these are the charts for today. These are the main ones I'll be focusing on today. Um, just remember, I am, if you were asking, hey, Song, what are you in? Well, I'm in XTC. I'm in XLM, I have two very small positions in both and I have a heavy position in XRP. So those are the, those are the three that I'm in currently. Uh, I have not changed my position on those in, in some days. Um, so since the last time I announced that that's what I'm doing. And remember, and remember team, this is not financial advice. Nothing here is financial or trading advice. It's just my own opinions on and for ent entertainment and comedic purposes only. Uh -huh.